Welcome back, everybody. Now, on Fridays, normally I do listener-submitted Q&A. But every once in a while, Michael and I will sit down and we'll chop it up a little bit. And when we do this, and this is the third time we've done it, I let Michael choose the questions. So you never really know where we're going to go. And today, we covered quite a bit of ground. Everything from men's nipples to stolen valor in Afghanistan, to people paying for boot camp experiences, thoughts on the military, and somebody who sued Twitch because they can't stop jacking off. I actually can't think of a less obtrusive way to say that. So Andy versus Michael, round three. Here we go. Okay, I got the red smoke. Okay, copy. West of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, wait a minute. Give it to me. I need it. Get cleared hot. Can't be cleared hot. This is round three. I hope that <laughs> you have at least... Here's what I hope. Okay. I hope that you have an understanding of what it is we're supposed to be doing. Not really, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> I wasn't even done with the things that apparently what I hope for and what I dream for doesn't matter, but so that you have an understanding of what we're trying to do. And then also, and I know this is a long <laughs> shot, but that maybe you would come prepared. Okay. I actually, I am prepared. I have a lot of questions. Where are you getting them from? Are uh, these your questions or is this people reaching out to you? No, they're mine. Some people have, but I don't think I wrote them down. Good, because we do Friday episodes for them anyway. Yeah, so exactly. Can... That's kind of what I thought. Um, All right, where would you like to begin? Like, if you had to rack and stack your questions, mm -hmm. and I'll assume that you maybe have two at maximum because of your lack of preparation and history of lack of preparation. Of oh, the two, have... which one's the most important? <laughs> First of all, I have like 20 on here. Uh, Seriously? Yeah, I have a lot. All right, fire away, man. All right. Um, do you know, I think you've actually been asked this before, but the starting audio, do you yep. know who it, it is even, who is saying that? This, I think this is a question that repeats itself probably at least once every month, more so when the podcast first kicked off. So yeah. the it is not me. That is one of the main questions. It is from a ground controller in Afghanistan that is controlling, I believe, a pair of A-10 mm. warthogs, which is in and of itself worth a lovely amount of time on YouTube. Um, that airplane, from my understanding, was literally designed around the Gatling gun up front. And it is one of the most glorious and heartwarming noises that you'll ever hear when that thing rips in overhead. Yeah. It's like, brrrr, and yeah. just fuck shit up. Yeah. So that controller was in the middle of a firefight. He was calling uh, in uh, gun runs, and I think they probably dropped all of the ordnance that they had as well. The gun runs at least were danger close, meaning it's inside of the minimum um, published criteria for safety for the controller on the ground. You can get them to come inside of that. Uh, pilots are hesitant to do it sometimes, as are the ground controllers, because sometimes bullets don't land where you intend them to. And I have had a few people reach out claiming that they are the person in that audio. And that is the only hesitation wow. that I have had around trying to actually find that person because I would love to be able to do so. But I get a little worried when I'm getting different reports that it is different people. Yeah. Because that, in my experience, isn't possible. Yeah, it can't be more than one person that I know of. Correct. Seems like it should just be only one person. Well, there were probably three people involved in that video. Two of them were the A-10 pilots, mm -hmm. and one of them was the guy on the ground. So I'd love to have a podcast episode with that guy. I cannot determine with any level of clarity exactly who it is. But what I am sure, for those of you who have asked, is that it's not me. Right. Even though I was a JTAC, I did hold that role uh, for a long time. I wasn't current um, at it towards the tail end of my career, but it's kind of awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool audio clip. Yes. I found yes. it on YouTube all by myself. Nice. And it's actually from a way longer uh, clip. I compressed it and kind of, you know what I mean? Spiced it yeah, up. Yeah, spiced it up. Really yeah. just gets the heart pumping. It kind of does, yeah. Overlay with me shooting that javelin. I think it's the perfect video. <laughs> yeah. I love that video. <laughs> when you... <laughs> When you shoot it and it, it, it explodes and then it pans back to you and you're just laughing with the javelin. What else? I mean, what other reaction is there? 
No, there's that's an appropriate reaction. It's just a really funny I think video. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to spend 100K in about 20 seconds, that's how I would prefer to do it. <laughs> yeah. And let's put a disclaimer on that, only if it's not me writing the check for 100K, even though technically yeah. I do pay my taxes. So I That's feel true. like I had a very small fractional ownership percentage mm -hmm. of that missile. That is very true. Um, is that how much one of those costs? I think they're about like 112000 That's a lot of money. Well, the DOD can't find about a $6 trillion. So <laughs> yeah. is it really? Is it really? <laughs> it's like a drop in the bucket at that point. And, you know. It's not like they can't not find their money just this year. Yeah. It's relatively year. common that that actually happens. Yeah. So. All right. Well. Yeah. Next question. That actually is a really common question that I get. I'm glad you brought yeah. that one up. Um, let's see. So have you <laughs> heard of this guy, Andy Elliott? Is he the salesman? With who wears the super tight clothes. Also, we're going to add to that. The inseam on the shorts that he wears from time to time. I'm not saying that there's bubble gum coming out either <laughs> side, but I'm saying if he goes a lot shorter, uh, there might be. There could be. So I am familiar with him only because I see his stuff all over social media platforms. Yeah. 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 That's where I saw him and I was like, oh my God, this guy's a fucking cuck. <laughs> He looks like a... It's interesting, right? He is yeah. a... So I don't know this person. I've have never had a single interaction with this person. I've never attended a course. I'm making... Anything that I say about this is based off only what I've seen online. He's playing what I think is a caricature. Caricature? Yeah. He's, a, he's, he's, he's become wildly successful playing that role. So I think the choices he's making, whether it comes to... And let's be honest, too. He probably has a team of people that are creating content behind the scenes. So he probably mm -hmm. has terabytes and hours of footage that they are compressing down into these most consumable or maybe trendy or potentially viral type videos, yeah. which is not a bad idea. I totally get that. Like, I understand the game that he's playing, but I'd be curious to see who he is away from cameras just in his own off yeah. time. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with creating that character. I think if you're going to do that, you have to realize, though, there's potential that you're creating a mousetrap for yourself, and then you're putting yourself into this role that people are going to expect that at all times, and if it's not really who you are, yeah. God, that's got to be tough. Yeah, then you're just that guy forever. So let me. So was it just the clothing that this person was wearing that got your attention? Because that actually says a lot about well, it. Well, no, no, it was also just the over-the-top, um, one of his quotes is, if you don't have a six pack, you're fired. Have you heard about that one? <laughs> no, and I'm pretty sure in the world that we live in in 2023 <laughs> that that's going to terminate. If, like if you try to fire somebody yeah. for not having a six pack, good luck having that stand up in a court of law. Yeah, and yeah. in a litigious society, you're going to get you're going to get absolutely annihilated. But again, that goes back to the character, right? Yeah, the team of people that he has creating that content are literally searching through all the stuff they have to try to find something that's going to stop people in their tracks and to get them to click on yeah. it. And my understanding is he, he does sales type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I've never, and you know, God, now that I'm thinking about this, I think in almost every video that I've seen of him, he's working with car salesmen. Yeah, that seems to be the norm. Okay, and so never spent a single fucking second selling cars, obviously. I haven't either. Um, I, like, I get it. He's created, a, like, a niche market for himself. From a communication perspective, some of the stuff I think he does is, is pretty good. Um, you know, I think he's working with a lot of people who maybe don't have a comfort level being consumer facing or maybe they're less developed interpersonal skills or maybe they're shy, whatever it may be. Because I feel like in that business, it's about reps and inter interacting with people, you know, and because if it's a large percentage of the answers is going to be no, the best way you can get more yeses is to, is to increase the number of uh, interactions that you have. Um, it's not the way that I would conduct myself, but I've also never been in that industry. Yeah. I just kind of recognize him as the the character that he's built for himself. Mm -hmm. 
And I got nothing but respect for the, you know, like I'm full on supporter of capitalism. Like if you want, like do whatever you want to do. Like, as, long, yeah. as long as it's not at the, as long as it's not at the cost to somebody else and you're like stepping on other people's heads to make mm. yourself successful. But what do I know about the, the car selling business? He seems to, uh, at least in the videos that I've seen, they're entertaining. Yeah. I don't understand uh, the the tight clothing choice. I don't either. Well, actually, it's... I take that back. I, I kind of do get it. He's probably worked really hard to get himself in good shape. Yeah, he's definitely in very good shape. And he's probably proud of it. And he wants yeah. to wear clothing that highlights that. Yeah. And I don't have any issue with that. But if I see your balls blasting out <laughs> one side of your shorts, I have a I have an issue with that. Yeah, that's a little much. Um, he's not there yet, but he's on the cusp. He's on the cusp, I mean. yeah. <laughs> I do know what you mean. There's yeah. also one where his nipples are like straight up hard as a rock. And you can, they're like pointing. How did you notice you. this? What, what, what videos, what are you spending your time doing? Oh, this isn't like a, a hidden video I had to search for. Like you just look up Andy Elliott. It's one of the first ones that pops okay, up. Okay, so hold on. You're telling me if I go to Google and put, up, put in Andy Elliott, what I'm going to see is nipples that are ready to cut glass? <laughs> Because I feel like you either looked for this no, or I that's didn't. all you're looking for I didn't when you're watching. Specifically. Okay, maybe he was in a cold room. Do we have an answer to this? Possibly. Here's a better question for you. Why do men have nipples? Um probably a leftover uh, kind of like a tailbone, you know. For but the tailbone served a purpose. It what, did. But what did what do nipples serve a purpose for for men? Oh yeah. Well, I think um it's just embryonic uh, development. There's no differentiation because everybody starts off as a woman in the womb. And then once you're- Is that true? That, I think that is true. And once your Y chromosome kicks in- I think you just made that up. That's. I'm pretty sure that's right. Hold on. Yeah. Let's use the vast resource of the internet because I think you just made that up. No, no, no. Geneticists have discovered that all human embryos start life as females, as do all embryos of mammals. About the second month, the fetal tests elaborate enough androgens to offset the maternal estrogens and maleness develops. Okay. Let me ask you this. Do your nipples ever get hard, Michael? Well, yeah. Then why are you concerned with why Andy Elliott's nipples <laughs> just, get hard? Just because he's wearing such a tight shirt that it's like Im immediately obvious. It's, it's the first thing you notice. And do you hide your nipples when they're hard? No. Do you show them off? No. Okay, so it's just a personal choice. <laughs> Maybe it's one of the d defining features or characteristics that he identifies with. It could be. I just thought it was slightly humorous. I mean, I would have a different word for that, but... <laughs> Gay. That was your word, not mine. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next question. <laughs> okay. Now let's also remember that you brought up that question and brought nipples into the conversation. <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting talking point. Yeah. That's great. You need to work on your interpersonal skills. If you think another man's nipples is an interesting talking point. They were quite pointy. So it was just like, you know. Maybe it, the AC was broken in the building, dude. Give the guy a break. Okay, like okay. until his fucking nutsack is either hanging out of his shorts or his little fucking dickhead is peeking out saying, oh, like, let's let the man wear what he wants to wear. Yeah, that, that's fine. And even in if he, those things are happening, you just got to go back to Ace Ventura and just be like, psst, your balls are showing. Which you probably have never watched that movie, have you? <laughs> oh, I did. It was a long time ago. Well, that's from the second one. The scene I remember is him pooping out of the r fake rhino. Is that the, from the so second that's one? That's the second one, okay. yeah, the rhino. Okay, yeah. Yeah. He didn't poop out of the fake rhino. <laughs> he came out of its butthole. He escaped the fake <laughs> what, rhinoceros through its What else asshole. would you call that? Is that not defecating? I would call that solving the problem at hand. <laughs> he couldn't escape any other way, so he took the only portal that was left over. That's true. The That's anus. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuck. Where is this episode going? I don't Tell know. me more. Question three. So far, yeah, we've had a question about the audio and another man's nipples. So we're right on track. This is perfectly yeah, this, on brand. This is pretty much a Michael versus Andy episode, I guess. Um, okay, here's a pretty funny one. Have you heard? So you know what Twitch is, right? Well, I'll tell you what I think Twitch is, and you tell me if I'm correct. Okay, this is good. It's a streaming service where people generally are playing video games, and people are on there watching them. Actually, yeah, that's 
pretty spot on. And I think they can do more than video games, but that's essentially what it is, right? It's a yeah. broadcast channel for an individual content creator. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then people give you tips. And by yeah. that, I mean monetary tips because you're entertaining them playing video games. Yeah, it's an interesting ecosystem. Yeah, I don't understand it. It's, it's beyond interesting I to either. me. I Like I have a Netflix flips flix subscription right which it slowly has gone up or like whatever apple tv and i if a new movie comes out i'll buy the movie but i would never subscribe to somebody's twitch channel to pay them a tip to watch them watching the movie that i wanted to yeah, watch it doesn't... It's like video games for me i would just go play the video game and i and i am the be the first person to admit that perhaps this platform is well the fuck over the top of my head and I'm not the target audience but if you like video games that much wouldn't it be better to just go play it yourself yeah, as opposed to watching somebody play yeah that's I'm in that boat like all right anyway so you know what twitch is Broadly. on twitch <clears throat> there are uh stre female streamers that just come right close to being banned as far as nudity Okay, so what are they on there, like lingerie? Basically, and like hot, there's things called hot tub streams. No, there's not. Yes, there are. N I don't believe you. Okay, <laughs> okay. well, it's a thing. Um, so it's really, it's just a platform you could kind of stream yourself doing anything you want to. Yes. So uh, chicks are probably on there mm -hmm. streaming scantily. God, what a wild way to make a living. Yes. Is that your question? No. <laughs> Have you heard of the guy that is suing Twitch because he couldn't stop jacking off to the hot tub streamers? And now he has a chapped uh, member. Okay. Where do you get your news? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is from a YouTube video I watched that was somebody explaining this situation. You... And this is going to likely happen because I'm going to report you to the authorities are going to go to prison for your Google search bar. I did not Google this. It showed up in my feed. Uh, that's not a good my sign YouTube either feed. because your feed is probably populated based off your search history. So you probably have like unicorns, fucking midgets, and then a dude <laughs> who literally is just jerking off to the point that he's tearing skin off of his dick. Um, I mean, for, well, first off, what's the basis? I mean- how could there be any legal basis? I don't. That, it's a voluntary activity. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, you have to log on to Twitch, right? So you, you're, you continuously are taking steps. You, you know, if you go get a DUI, you can't sue the company that created the alcohol that you were drinking. Yeah, that's dumb. There might be, I think there might be an argument if there was gross negligent on a server over serving somebody, but you can't actually go back and, and sue uh, let's say you're a um, you're a vodka person. You can't sue Tito's yeah. because you developed alcoholism or got a DUI or smashed into another car. So I don't, you know what I mean? Like they are the creator of the product that you chose to go well. Not that I'm necessarily even aware of what the recommended daily usage for alcohol, if there is any. That's a totally other conversation as to whether yeah. or not it can even have a positive impact in your life, but. I don't see how Twitch can be liable for somebody's broadcast channel that another person is then furiously jerking off to, probably wearing a ski mask and a, you know, and a fucking fairy costume. So this is like mainstream news. That's how I heard about it. Okay, so Sex Addict sues Amazon-owned video 25 million because he has too many scantily clad gamers that left him excited and injured himself. <laughs> He is following 786 of the female gamers and insane? zero male streamers. It's Well, let me ask you this. Is it actually insane? Or is this a symptom of the human brain not being able to, to comprehend or tolerate or deal with the connectivity that is possible in the modern world? Well, yeah, I mean... Like, I have questions about this person as well. Yeah. Like, I'd be really curious to know about his upbringing... His yeah. social skills, his social circle, if there are any. This seems to be like a phantom jacker in his mom's basement. <laughs> like, yeah. the door is locked. You know what I mean? If the door is rocking, don't come and knock it. Yeah. I mean, does he have, like, a pneumatic noose system that goes around his <laughs> neck that's, like, foot pedal controlled? 
you know what I mean? It's very David Carradine, I know, which yeah, is probably yeah. a reference that's way over your yeah, head. Yeah, I have but, no clue who that is. I'll let you Google that in your <laughs> own time on how he... Autoerotic asphyxiation. I know what that is. Yeah, and I'm not claiming to know anything about David Carradine, but I'm pretty sure he got found in a hotel room in Japan with something around his neck and something else in his hand, if you know what I'm saying. A little I do know what you're saying. Self care time. Yeah. A little <laughs> yeah. personal maintenance and recovery time. Oh, it was in Bangkok, Thailand. I mean yeah. Which has other implications. Yeah. Um I hadn't heard that. It makes me God, that makes it's so sad. Yeah. Like seven hundred, he's following seven hundred and eighty-six. So there, I mean, how can you say that that is a platform's problem? Even if you have an addictive personality, like here's an idea: go pull your fucking Wi-Fi router out of the wall, yeah, and put your phone on airplane mode, and let your dick heal, you know, <laughs> for at least a day. I'm thinking in this particular situation, more than a day would be appropriate, <laughs> optimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Is he using sandpaper as a lubricant? <laughs> like, what does this guy have going on here? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, do yes. you want to know? I don't. Not really. No, I hadn't heard about that, and it sucks. And uh, it falls in line with something that I have noticed, and I don't know how broadly this applies, but most people, to include myself, at times will go out of their way to find somebody else who is responsible for their behavior yeah. as opposed to owning it yeah. themselves. Yeah. Like go on Amazon and buy a set of handcuffs too and fucking handcuff yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how flexible this guy is. It might solve, not solve the problem for him. If you know what I'm Could saying. Get difficult. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of guy who's like, Hey, can I get three of my ribs removed for increasing my flexibility? <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty rampant story in grade school. Oh, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's uh, auto? Uh, I forget. I don't know what the word is. Do we need to know? We what don't the word really is? need to. Yeah, we no, don't. We, to. we can just skip past that. Yeah, let's yeah. let's go ahead. <laughs> okay. Skip past that. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, did you ever in the military have any contact with the Foreign Legion? I did not. I'm aware of... You're talking about the French Foreign Legion? Mm -hmm. I'm aware of what they are very broadly. Um, no, never encountered a single person that was associated mm -hmm. with them. Where would that question come from? Um, I watched a video on the... It was... Is it an ex-seal that went to the no, French Foreign no. Legion? No, it, yeah. it was... a. Uh, it was uh, just kind of a documentary style of like, here's what the Foreign Legion is, here's what they do. Um, and Did it of, interest you enough to the point where you would consider joining? Um, very lightly, I would consider it. It seems interesting, you know. I don't think you would do well in warfare. <laughs> okay. You're more of a gentle soul. I don't see that negatively. Yeah. You know, there's gardeners and there's warriors. <laughs> and you know what they say, it's better to have <laughs> yeah. a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. I'm kind of a gardener type. I don't even know if you're a gardener. You might be like a botanist. You'd be the guy researching seeds yeah. to increase the, the harvest. In my room at night. Well, yeah, when you're not searching dudes who are rubbing their penis raw, which I am worried about how you spend your time. First of all, actually, this is like the third time I didn't search for that. It was mainstream news, and somebody just happened sure to was. cover it. Sure. I mean, you can call it whatever you want to. Um, yeah, have you ever thought about military service? Yeah, actually. What are the pros and cons in your mind? Somebody who's in their early 20s, what are your thoughts about uh, the modern day military? What would seem enticing yeah. to you and what are things you're like, you know what? No. Pros. Um, the uniform, obviously. The uniform, yeah. I want to look really good. What branch would you go into? Uh, if I did go into, I would do Army and I'd want to do Rangers. No, you would fail both of those. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, you don't have what it takes. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Anyways, if if I did go in, that's what I would do. No. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. You would be better off, I think, served as like an Air Force intelligence officer. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah. I'm gonna disregard that advice completely. I mean, I'll I will take you to the recruiter <laughs> right now and sign you up and document your journey towards failure. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Anyway, so Army Ranger. Back, yeah. 
Um, so Ranger Mike is your new name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pros, um, like the, I guess, training and discipline you would get from the experience yep. and the, uh, obviously I'm speaking out of things I've heard you say and other people say, but like, they're generally true. It's yeah. a, I describe military service and I can only speak through the lens of the Navy, but from my understanding, all branches of the military, you know, the mechanism of boot camp in and of itself is to kind of take you from a me centered focus to a little bit more of a we centered focus that continued training. Like you certainly, if let's say you were able to complete that pipeline, which we both can agree, you can It would never happen. Yeah. Never happen. I would put every penny of my net worth on you. I feel like you would quit before it even began, but that's, that's a different conversation. <laughs> on the bus right there. No, you'd get through boot camp and, uh, but you would, you would not make it through ranger training. Okay. Um, discipline, communication, work ethic, like those things can, de and that's just military in general. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think you would leave with a, a different perspective of those things for sure. Yeah. So what else? So pros is the discipline and the, and the, yeah. the byproducts of the training. Um, also having, it seems like you would have a really great sense of purpose. Potentially. Yeah. Um, you know, what if you served in a in a time period where all you were able to do was train? Yeah. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with from post-Vietnam to pre-9-11. And I don't think it's a bad thing, but imagine, um, God, what would be a good, I'm trying to think, roll this into jujitsu. Imagine for 20 years, all you got to do was go to class and you never got to go to an open mat. Would you feel as fulfilled with jujitsu? You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's this, it's, and and that's why I answer questions the way that I do sometimes about people saying, hey, I've always felt this draw, but I have this great job, but I want to give it all up so I can go do this, that, or the other. And my response to them almost always is, but what if you never get the chance to do mm -hmm. that? So the idea of having this greater sense of purpose is not a bad one. And I don't want to ever advocate or recommend people that they shouldn't follow that and shouldn't want that. But there is a good possibility that the military and service may not satisfy that. And then so then you're still left with this kind of hole of who am I? What do I do with my life after that? It can be problematic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what else? Um, well, cons. Well, you only listed two pros. No, I didn't. I was, there was like three or four. You said the discipline. Mm -hmm. You said the purpose. Camaraderie. Camaraderie, okay. Yeah. Um, cons. Cons. This might be a little controversial, um, but it seems that recently, or I guess in the past too, you can make this argument, a lot of wars were not uh, for the defense of America, but rather for interests of... Not exactly corporations, but a lot of it was corporations. The military industrial complex. Yeah. I mean, it would be an interesting study to go back t to the history of humanity and really take an objective lens mm -hmm. and look at how many wars and conflicts were actually required in defense of a nation yeah. versus anything other than that, whether it be expansion, you know, earlier on when there were less humans and people were still exploring the world. Mm hmm. Uh, religious ideologies, economic beliefs. I think what you would find is almost all had nothing to do with actual true defense of a yeah. nation. And most of them had to do with expanding either influence or r literal real estate throughout the world. Yeah. And yeah, and so that's like, I don't want to uh, fight for, I guess, a purpose that isn't uh in my mind just i can understand that i can understand that headspace um again in my own personal experience in times of peace it's easy for people to sit around and say hey you know I wanted to go to the military because I'm fighting for this country and I'm fighting for people's rights. And, and I'm not here to say either these things are uh, correct or incorrect or wrong or right. Um, dude, when the metal or the rubber meets the road, 
you're fighting for the person that's next to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, I can't think of a single time in a kinetic environment where I had a grandiose headspace yeah. thinking to myself, this is for America. <laughs> yeah. De -de 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 -de. Yeah. You know, it's, I hope that I fucking get out of this alive yeah. and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that that happens in the person next to me. Um, you know, as a soldier I, or as somebody who's had their boots on the ground, you have absolutely no impact over policy. You have yeah. no impact over the strategic level of warfare that people at pay grades beyond your, your, the air that you breathe are making decisions on. The best that you can do is impact the environment that you are in and be the best. In my mind, you can be the best representative of what the U.S. means through your own actions. And that's about it. Yeah. You know, the military is an individual team sport. It's a, it's a collection of our society. There's people there for a variety of reasons and a variety of beliefs. And almost none of them, literally a handful of people in the military can probably impact strategic policy or national defense policy. The rest of them are doing the best that they can, man. And if, if you go into that knowing that you might not have an immense amount of control or any control whatsoever on the steering wheel of the aircraft carrier that is the U.S. military, and I use that analogy because – it just takes so long for it to make a correction change, either right or left. But you know that you can be the best representative of what you believe the country stands for at an individual level. I think you can still maintain that sense of purpose. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't fault you for the – I think people should be students of history. And I think people yeah. should look very critically and objectively – and beyond, and I'll add to that, I wish our policymakers made decisions as if they were the ones who are going to have mm -hmm. to execute it or their direct family or children were going to be the ones that had to execute it. Yeah. Because I think it would change the velocity of some of the decisions that they yeah. make. Yeah. 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 Wasn't that a big thing in the Vietnam War was a lot of the senators and stuff that uh, shielded their kids, their sons from the draft. Some people have bone spurs, man. You know? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what other cons? What do people your age in your social circle, what do they think about the military? Um, I mean, we don't really talk about it. Uh, I think everybody... Do you know anybody from your age group that joined the military? Mm -hmm. I know a couple people. Um, they did... Well, and there actually I have a, a guy, I wouldn't say we're like great friends, but that we're buddies who's still in the military. Um, I haven't talked to him forever. I have one friend that got out um, and I haven't really talked to him about it. Like we weren't like great friends. Yeah. But yeah, I do know they a couple in your people. social circle. Yeah. Okay. Um, what other cons do you have anything about the military? Um. Obviously, there's the danger aspect, mm -hmm. you know, like there's, from what I understand, always a risk that you might die. Yeah, but you might die today driving your car to the studio. That is true. But yeah. You might go to jiu-jitsu later today, and I'll try to get, I'm assuming you're going to midday class today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, you might, uh, you might break your neck. Yeah, it's possible. And never be able to walk again, and somebody mm -hmm. will have to wipe your ass for you. <laughs> you were almost at that point. Mm, I don't think so, but <laughs> I wasn't paralyzed. I know, but I mean, with the uh, I whatever. mean, my tummy ache paralyzed yeah. my intestines. But <laughs> yeah. um, do you know what I said to Leah when she was asking me if she could drive to the hospital? <laughs> First off, she lied to me and didn't say we were going to go to the hospital. She said, "Hey, just let me drive." Mm -hmm. She kept saying, "Don't you think we should go to the doctor?" You know what my response was? Because I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. What? What's a doctor going to do for a tummy ache? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Andy response. 20 minutes later, I was in the fetal position yeah. on the emergency room, waiting room floor. It's probably good you guys went to the hospital. Oh, you think? The doctor <laughs> said I was about a day away from a colostomy bag. Yeah. That would be a bummer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah, what else you got? Cons. Um... I mean, I'm sure there are a lot 
of cons that I'm just not thinking of. Okay, fair uh, enough. But I guess those are the two main ones, like the danger aspect and then the, uh, you know, serving when you may not agree with what's going on. Yeah, the danger aspect is an interesting one. There, you know, risk is a spectrum. Um, and I don't think you can remove risk to zero. And actually, if you do find yourself doing something where the risk is zero, I'm pretty sure you found something totally meaningless and yeah. worthless. But there are so many roles and responsibilities in the military, and there are some with what I will call a greater amount of risk, and there are some with a very low amount of risk. So there is kind of something there for everybody. A lot of people don't realize that the vast majority of the military is not even designed to engage in combat operations. About 80% of it is not designed to engage in combat operations. And you do have a choice in your hand on the wheel when it comes to crafting which direction you want to go with your career. So if you wanted to be in a less risk, uh, in a more risk averse role. It is 100% possible. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Let me see. <laughs> um, Just read it. <laughs> you seem like you're trying to skip over There's There are a few that I'm trying to decide between. What's your opinion on modern art? Where is this question coming from? I am just, I have a somewhat strong opinion on modern art. Why? I... Where did this opinion come from? First off, I'll be totally honest. I don't even know necessarily what qualifies as modern art. So you're going to have to put some brackets on what we're talking about Okay. Here. So I guess specifically what I'm talking about is something... Uh, okay. Do you remember a while ago that painting that was a field of blue, a white stripe, and a field of blue? I am shocked and it to sold. believe that you are asking me if I remember the painting. <laughs> well, it was huge because it sold for like a ridiculous amount of money. Was it an NFT? No, it was a real painting that it looked like they just put took a paint roller and swiped it across. That would be dope if that's actually what they did. I think that's probably what they did. So here's the thing. My, my weakest, the weakest aspect of my game um, is creativity. Mm -hmm. I am not good at ideating uh, new ideas like graphics or logos or stuff like that. So when I look at art of any kind, I can appreciate it for what it is, but I don't understand it. And because I don't like, I, like I'm just like anybody else, I guess I gravitate, gravitate towards things that I like and stuff that I don't like, I just mm -hmm. don't like, but I don't put any, I don't put any judgment on either of those because I don't have an understanding of how people are this creative. Yeah. I have no understanding why some art is valuable and some art is not. I can totally appreciate it for what it is, but I don't have any opinions whatsoever on modern art, really. If people, you know, I guess the value of something is what people are willing to pay for it. And if somebody's willing to pay that much money for it, I'm not here to say it's a good investment or a bad one, but, you know, go for it. Would you call this, hold on, creative? This is an art exhibit. I mean, I could do that. Exactly. Yes. Again, I have no right to judge anybody else's creativity. Is that for me? Is a room full of painted black canvas for me? No, but mm -hmm. I'm not, who's to say it's not for somebody else? Yeah. What's interesting is how many people launder money through art. Yeah. Because they can buy it and you could take, let's like say that that painting sold for a hundred million bucks for easy math. You could roll that thing up into a tube and I'm not suggesting that somebody would check it into an airplane because that seems psychotic for something of that value. Mm -hmm. But you want to talk about crossing borders in the international, like yeah. with a hundred million dollars, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. You're like, oh no, I have this painting mm -hmm. that is worth this much. That's why I have this much money. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works, but I like where your head's at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and in my mind, that's how it works too. Simplicity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll trade you this hundred million dollar painting for eighty million euros. Yeah, I'll just take cash. You take this, and uh, we just won't talk to any of the authorities. I don't know if that's how it works, but I don't know either. But I have heard that a lot of big art houses, maybe not a lot of them, there's a conspiracy that art houses are just big money laundering 
operations. I bet to a degree that's true. Yeah. As soon as I get some money, I'm going to launder it. And by that, I mean probably leave it in my pants pockets by accident and just put it in the washing machine. Yeah. Which, you want to talk about just... something interesting. The experiment of watching what Tyler does with his laundry <laughs> is amazing. As in how he washes it? The car keys have been through. Mm. Uh, multiple sets of AirPods and earbuds. <laughs> full chapsticks. Entire packs of gum. Chewed gum. Gum wrappers. Uh, retainer and uh, brace rubber bands. He really... He really doesn't check his laundry. He's putting everything through there. It's amazing. Yeah. And I know that there's something in there and I'll go look because it sounds like we're basically doing a dryer load full of gravel. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Bouncing around. Yeah. And I'll open it up and I never know what to expect. Yeah. Sometimes it's just melted gelatinous gum (laughs) and sometimes it's the AirPods that I bought them. It's pretty sweet. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. It's it's real great. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What else you got? Um... (sighs) Uh, <laughs> how about uh, Irish hate speech, Bill? You have been following the Ireland stuff? No. Where are you getting this stuff? This just pops up. Irish hate speech, Bill. Yeah. Let's pull that shit up and see what it looks like. I can tell you right now, I am anti-censorship. Well, you're going to hate this. This this to me already sounds like it's going to be like very Canadian in nature. Was it there, kind of is. Yeah. All right. Uh, the new hate speech and hate crime bill will create new aggravated forms of certain existing criminal offenses, such as assault, where those offenses are motivated by hatred against people with a protected characteristic, such as race, gender, religion, sexual. What? I mean, you could you could categorize anybody with a protected yeah. characteristic. The bill indicates the mere chance. Okay, scroll down a little bit. The bill indicates that the mere chance that someone may be likely to incite hatred is enough to be guilty. That is a slippery slope. The Irish Constitution guarantees the right to freedom of expression, but it is subject to public order and morality. Man. Yeah, I agree with you. That is a slippery slope because you can, you know, protected categories. Who's to say that that list doesn't keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing over time? I, uh, I do not believe that words are violence. No. I do believe that words can be used to motivate, to motivate people to take action. That could be defensive action. That could be violent action. That could be everything in between. But the vibrating noises that come out of somebody's mouth, in my opinion, which is all that it counts for, is not violence in any way, shape, or form. And anybody who has mm-hmm. ever been exposed to violence, I think, would probably land in the same place. There are ideas that I think are absolutely abhorrent. There are words that can be hurtful to people because it's anti to something that they deeply believe in. But does that mean that we should ever restrict somebody's ability to express themselves or say those things? My answer is no. Yeah. Um, You can't control what other people do and say, but you can 100% control how you receive it. Yeah, And and I'll use an example of something. This was actually in national news. Did you see the video of the Delta employee and the transgender? Yes. Yeah. The transgender... um, Fuck, I don't even know how to describe it. Person. Actor or actress. Yeah. I've seen some of this recently, um, and I and I'm I can't say with certainty that this is what they're doing, but it certainly seems that there are a subsection or a cohort of people that are going out there and they are in enti- they are trying to uh entice people into situations for the pure result in filming them and then posting that on the internet. Every time I go out to dinner, I get, you know, misgendered. Um, And then you come to find out that this person has their camera up at every meal and they're calling ahead to go to restaurants and like demanding a certain level of treatment. And what they're really looking for 
is for somebody to fall short of the standard that they believe needs to be in place because they want to do something about it. And to me, the response from the Delta employee of like, listen, this was not intentional, but if you want to take it personally, that's that's fine too. Yeah. That's your choice. Yeah. That's kind of the headspace that I fall into. Yeah. I, you know, being misgendered, I can understand how somebody, because I've said this before, I I do believe that there are people who feel like they are trapped in, in a different body or somebody else's body. Right, I yeah. can I can empathize to the best of my ability and try to understand to the best of my ability what that may feel like. But at a deeper level, if they say that, I do believe that that's how they feel. Mm-hmm. But that is how they feel. And yeah. my issue is when somebody else's belief set requires me to participate and believe in it, that is a bridge too far. Because mm-hmm. people, if it's really life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you have to take sovereignty over your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You can't control – like I get it. Being misgendered for somebody who believes that or that is their particular ideology could probably feel hurtful. You need to fucking deal with that because yeah. the real world – has absolutely no obligation to participate in your beliefs. Yeah. Well, and it's it's going to happen, especially if you have biological features of the sex that you don't think you are. People, the human brain is going to recognize, oh, that's a male. And right off the bat, that's what you're instinctual, instinctually going to say is pronouns relating to uh, the features that are presented. Probably more than likely. And you might say something that somebody else doesn't appreciate. And if there's no malicious intent in that, like that person needs to fucking deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing it on purpose to make them mad, that's a little bit different. You know, like again, it goes back to the character thing, right? Yeah. You know, if like, if that's what you want to do, I mean, more power to you, but understand that there's probably a bright side and a shadow side of those particular behaviors and you have to accept both. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. I uh, I do not think that we should limit people's ability to express themselves. I think it is one of the core principles of this country. And I mean, if Ireland and Canada want to go down that pathway, that's fine. That's a real world like uh, science experiment that we can watch. And I think at the end of the day, what it'll do is reinforce the fact that we should absolutely in no way, shape or form go down that pathway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I noticed on this is an offense to communicate threatening, abusive, or insulting material, um, which is so broad that you could apply it It's just to subjective. The problem anything. with that is it's 100% yes. subjective. And what about, who's the arbiter of that? And yeah. how long does that arbiter get to stay in that position of making these mm-hmm. decisions? And what happens when it a new person comes in and they don't necessarily directly agree? Are we going to change the law? Right. I mean, history has kind of shown us that once shit like this gets into place, it's not going to go anywhere no. else. No. It's only going to get probably more restrictive and more restrictive and more restrictive. So, yeah, I think that's a galactically bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, so... Just wondering if you uh, saw that. I didn't <laughs> see it. Your day. I hope your day is brightened after uh, reading this. I after reading that, I'm glad that I don't call Ireland my home. I visited <laughs> yeah. there last year and it was yeah. an amazing place, but I am not interested in participating in a system that is no. like that. No. Yeah, me either. I think uh, I would like to say what I want. Um. Have you heard? Have you? I think we've kind of talked about this, but have you seen those like? you pay $10,000 to go to a weekend of like simulated boot camp. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the military experiences a lot of them are yeah. based around seal stuff or special operations. Um $10,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. If you put in the time, energy and effort to make 10 grand and you are at a place in your life where you think that that would be a worth worthwhile investment, who am I to tell you that you shouldn't? Mm-hmm. Um I mean, we live we are living in a time where discomfort and pain are like medically treatable offenses at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as if we're not as a species supposed to encounter any hardship or frustration or fuck failure. Don't yeah. say that word out loud. Yeah. Um, whereas to me in my life, the most beneficial things have come from those. So I can understand where people, if they are living in a world that has 
an attempt at least to round all of the edges, I can understand why that would be enticing, especially if it's an experience outside of anything else that they have done in their life up until that point. Having been somebody who was in the military, I understand the value of now looking back. I understand the value of a lot of the things that we did. Those lessons, though, I'm not I'm not sure that they can become concrete in a very short period of time. However, I do understand why people would want to do it. They're looking for a challenge. They're, yeah. I think that if we get to this place where I, I truly do think it's like any physical discomfort, any type of pain it needs to be treated because it has to be removed. I think most people get to a place where they realize, oh, you know what's actually missing? Something hard. So they end up going looking for that, and that's one of the viable options that they have. Yeah. As long as people get – so if they charge 10000 bucks for that, if you're getting $10,000 of value out of that, more power to you. I got, yeah. I got nothing to – I got nothing to say about that. If you're paying ten grand and it's a bunch of people who are yelling at you for the sake of yelling at you and you think you're going to be a transformed person or a better business person at the end of that, so you're paying ten and you're getting a thousand dollars in value back, I got a problem with that for sure. Well, yeah, and that's kind of the ones that I'm talking about where it's it seem I mean, seems to me that it's just people yelling at you. Let's send you to one. That would be. I would actually do that. That would be so funny. I'm down to send you to one. That would be. That would be hilarious. I would love to do that. It would give you an idea of what uh, your failed ranger pipeline would look like. <laughs> okay. Good. Right. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to send you to one, but I get to document it. Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, take video and stuff? Yeah, that's what documenting it. Well, means. I know, but I didn't know if you were like going to come along with me. As a documentarian. Okay. I'm not sure that's a word either, but that's what I I don't know either. Yeah. Um, I saw one where, (laughs) so they have like a bell there that you ring if you want to quit. That's what I'm talking about. And (laughs) they were all lined up and one of the instructors takes this guy out and he goes, he's like yelling right in his face, yelling at him. He goes, you're going to ring that bell right now. And he goes, no, I don't like, I don't want to do that. And he goes, no, you're holding this team back. You're ringing the bell. And it goes, this goes on for like two minutes and he's like, okay, I guess. And he rings the bell and he goes, good, you're out of here. And so this guy paid $10,000 for this weekend to be cut short by this guy, you know, forcing him to quit. Yeah. Remember, nobody can force you to quit, right? It, from a perspective of somebody chipping away at that person. Yeah. The actions taken are the responsibility of the person who took that action. A guy didn't force him to quit. Yeah, He took him to an emotional or mental headspace where the guy either didn't want to deal with it anymore. He was frustrated. He didn't know how to get the interaction to end. And they made that choice. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say, hey, this person forced me to quit. Not true at all. It's voluntary. And that is one of the things that you learn over exposure to these things for a long period of time. I used to do that same shit to bud students. Hey, we'd line the whole class up for like surf conditioning, which also used to be called surf torture. Exactly the same evolution, but we had to round the edges on the world. Right, yeah. Okay, like, hey, we're going to stay out here until somebody quits. We're going to be out here all night long until one of you quits. And then somebody eventually will get up and, and ring the bell and they will quit. And then we say, I think we need one more. We're not forcing anybody to quit. Yeah, yeah. Somebody having a conversation with themselves is justifying a behavior that they will regret for the rest of their life. And a lot of the time, oh, I'm doing this for the team. I'm doing this for the betterment of others. The reality is you have convinced yourself you can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can describe it however the fuck you want to. But nobody, and this is an important lesson in life, and this is one that I have failed at as well. Nobody can force you to quit. You have to take the action yourself. Nobody throws the towel in for you. And like an octagon, sure, like actually literally somebody can throw yeah, a towel in because yeah. your coaches are like, okay, you're knocked out on your feet, right? They're literally yeah. trying to prevent you from taking more life-altering damage. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, it's fucking 100% in your control. But that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Because it removes your ability to blame other people for your choices and actions. Yeah, that's a good point. Never really thought of that. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, no. Hmm, okay. 
good to know. Yeah. What else you got? You got time probably for one more. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. How about uh, Jack Adema? Heard of that guy? I'm going to need some context. So this guy. The first word, I'm like, oh, God, we're going back to <laughs> skin issue. <laughs> Jack Adema. I don't think I've ever heard this name. Give, so, me, some, give me some context here. Yeah. Uh, so this guy was, I don't think he was ever in the military. Okay. However, he comma uh, classified himself as a mercenary. Fuck yeah! Went over to, uh, I think it was Iraq. Okay. Or no, it was Afghanistan, and was doing all sorts of intelligence work that the, nobody asked him to do. How do we know that he did any of this? Uh, it's all documented. By who? By Jack? Uh, I think by Jack. Um, yeah, so he is um, documenting his own behavior here? Yeah, so... Yeah, I can't see any potential problems with that. Well, and then there's another lady uh, that he was, like, seeing. Okay, let me just... Here's his Wikipedia page. Yeah, pull this shit up. I need to read this. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he died. He was found guilty of running an unlawful and unsanctioned yeah. private prison in Afghanistan? Who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is he Falsely was... portraying himself as a U.S. government-sponsored special forces operative? Fuck yeah. Um... Oh, my. Idema served three years of a 10-year sentence. He was released early by Afghanistan's then-president, Hamid Karzai, in 2007, left Afghanistan in early June from Mexico, where he died of AIDS in late January 2012. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's a whole... I watched a whole documentary on it on YouTube, and it is crazy. What was the name of the documentary? Because I need to watch this. I don't remember I can, i'll send it to you after this here's what i mean i don't have any deep thoughts on this other than i'm curious to see the documentary yeah there are there are so many ways to kind of hide in the seams of what is like public facing and what is really known about the military and then things that people like hear whispers about yeah which for somebody like this i don't know fuck all about this guy but he was definitely doing some illegal shit, and it seems highly likely yeah. that most of the things he claims to have accomplished in his life, he did not. Mm -hmm. um, because there's not a lot of information out about a lot of programs or entities or organizations, it allows people, if they're really motivated enough, to operate kind of in the seams like this. And it's a dangerous thing. But the people that are doing that are usually psychopathic or sociopathic. Like, this is not a normal behavior for a person. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and I'm not a fan of... Nor do I, I think that we should like blow the curtain back on all programs and all organizations for that level of transparency that would make this impossible because it would people, it would put people at risk. Um, but because not everything is talked about publicly and openly, it, it creates a little bit of yeah. room for people like this. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't imagine dying of AIDS was awesome. So, and I'm not even going to speculate on how he came exposed oh, to that the documentary covers it <laughs> well first off i'm gonna need the documentary so it's like you know he probably had a pretty painful way out and i don't know necessarily if i believe in karma and stuff like that but hmm you know <laughs> it's interesting for sure yeah it's interesting yeah. for sure uh what's the saying you reap what you sow although this isn't really that directly is saying, connected yes. but you know it's uh yeah you reap what you sow another way to look at that and i see this sometimes in people who have like this meteoric rise to whatever notoriety or fame. It's interesting to see how they treat people on the way up Yeah, because that's how you're going to get treated on the way down. And I think some people, which I mean, we're now diverging a little bit from this particular topic, but they forget that the, the depth and the length of memories that some people can have, and they will just step on everybody's head to try to just ascend that ladder and I don't think they're ready for what happens when they come yeah. down the other side. Because people are just sitting there with fucking sharp knives. <laughs> yeah. And they should be. Yeah. Yeah. If you're an asshole and then 
the moment you or you show weakness, you lose your platform or yeah. something happens. Yeah, you're gonna get stabbed right in the back. Yeah. What do you want to close it out on, Michael? I got to get you to class since I still can't participate. Yeah. I actually um, feel like I could still beat you even in my limited capacity. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do I want to close that with? It's up to you. I don't know. Uh, do we have enough questions left for round four? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll have enough for round four. There's some interesting ones on here that some of them are. I'll be the judge of that. Some right. of them are at Tyler's request. Oh fuck! <laughs> so you can only imagine where this is going to go. Truly. All right. <laughs> but yeah. Until next time, then. Until next time.